Hi there, it's Marzena. It is my channel's first spooky season, so I decided to create not one, not two, but three Halloween special dolls. One bloody, one cute, and the last one will be the creepy one. My latest, and Ariel, was definitely a gruesome girl, so it's time for some sweetness. I had a whole concept for a little cute witch ready, but then so many of you started asking about a pumpkin fairy. So I thought, why the heck no? For once, let's give the people what they want. So this one is for you. Let's dive in. From the start, I wanted to make the cute Halloween project with the little sister body type. This Halloween came to me with a broken arm, but I'm gluing my dolls in place, so things like this don't bother me at all. Here you can see a difference between little sister, big sister and a regular body of Monster High dolls. Okay then, let's get to work. To prepare a doll, you first need to cut all the hair as close to the scalp as possible. Then you need to heat up the head by soaking it in hot water or by using a hair dryer. I tried both methods and as you can see, I prefer the soaking one. The heat will make the vinyl head more squishy, easier to remove from the neck pack. And it will melt the glue that holds the hair plugs inside. Then I just needed to loosen them up and extract them through the neck hole. This doll didn't have any glue inside her head whatsoever. Ugh, I'm unsatisfied. Let's get rid of her factory face using acetone and cotton pots. I'm not a fan of Monster High proportions, and this body is even smaller than the regular one. So we will be needing a lot of shrinking. The removed hair left me with a lot of big marched holes, so I was afraid to use the fast shrinking technique. So this is why I won't be able to finish my third Halloween project on time. The fast shrinking process takes 26 hours. The slow method takes 96 hours. And after those 96 hours, I got this. Not enough! I repeated the process once again. After 8 days of shrinking, I could finally remove her doggy ears. Normally, I could reposition the wolf ears to turn them into elven ears. But Holin has this one floppy ear and it was good for nothing. I will have to sculpt the ears from scratch. But before I do it, yes, I will be making a reroute. Like the head shrinking didn't take enough time already. I wanted to make wefts for my witch concept, but for a pumpkin fairy I needed to change that. I made the hair from the orange and green acrylic yarn and used my handmade reroot tool and a poking tool to reroot the whole head. It went pretty quickly and I didn't break any needles during the process. So don't be telling me that I can't reroot a shrunken head. I will leave a links to a great tutorials about that in a description box. With a sharp scalpel, I cut some of her lower lip to make the room for a sticking out tongue. I wanted to give her a cute little rascal's face expression. I smoothed things out with a fine milling cutter on a dental micromotor. It was time to fill the holes that were left after I cut the ears off. I put some hot glue into each hole and stick a thin strand of hair into them. I also glued in a wire reinforcements for her new ears and tongue.
When the holes were plugged, I squeezed some high-tech glue into the head to secure the hair plugs inside. To the body! As always, I sanded down the plastic seams, factory numbers and panties. At that point, I also trimmed down her neck peg and slimmed down the neck. I also wanted her to be like in the same family as my tooth fairies, so I curved the segment-like patterns on her torso, legs and arms. And when I say about my fairies, family or cousins, I mean like in an animal kingdom, not like a human relatives but more like a tiger may be called a cousin of a domestic cat. I like to think of my fairies as of animal-like creatures, not tiny humans. This is why I'm not giving them any clothes. After the glue inside the doll's head dried, it was time to reattach it to the body. A little elbow grease and voila! Now we can see the true power of the head shrinking. In my opinion, 8 days well spent. I covered the hair with an old sock pinning it down at the hairline. With two part epoxy sculpt, I sculpted the elven ears and a sticking tongue with a lower lip. I let the epoxy cure overnight and after that I sanded it gently with a nail buffer. To prepare the face for a face-up, I'm spraying three layers of Mr. Super Clear Matte Varnish. And I'm using Mr. Super Clear UV Cut Flat during the face-up. The matte version is just easier to get here in Poland. Of course, before I sprayed the face, I needed to match the epoxy parts with the doll's head. When all the green was covered and the face was sprayed with a sealant, I could finally start the face up. First, I used brown pan pastel to darken her skin tone a little bit. I wanted it to be warm, like the color of autumn leaves. Then I used regular soft pastels to blush and contour the face. When I was satisfied with the base, I sprayed it once again with MSC and after it dried, I could start sketching the eyes with watercolor pencils. I'm using Faber-Castell Albre Durer and I had pretty hard time finding a sharpener that would match the thickness of those pencils. Lately, I bought a sharpener from Faber-Castell itself and even this one wasn't a good match. Luckily, the bigger hole works, even if it's still not perfect. I sketched the eyes with the brown pencil. To give her even more sassy look, I decided to draw one of her eyes closed. I gave her ginger brows matching her hair and green eyes.
I also added tiny wrinkles on her nose. I was switching a lot between pastels and pencils. So, about the fairy. I wanted to make her lore similar as it was for my tooth fairies. That she finds some of her features similar to a pumpkin and that is why she is so fond of these veggies. She is a little rascal, just as her yellow cousins. A true trick-or-treater, you might say. I wanted to give her a lot of tones and colors that are typical to the autumn season. I also gave her teeny tiny freckles. When I'm recording my face-ups, I always end up working in the lower left corner of the screen. I'm so sorry for that. I think that I'm subconsciously trying to evade my camera that is in front of me, attached to the grip on my right. I will try to work on that in the future. When I'm starting to add acrylics, you know that the face-up is almost finished. I used black for her lashes, pupil, and inside of her mouth and nose. White for the highlights, pink for lips and tongue, and green and yellow for her iris. I never paint the scleras white. The white of the eyes is never that bright, so I let it be. And the face up is done! Let's unwrap her completely. Yep, warming up her skin tone went pretty well. Once again a comparison with original Howling, because I am so in love in her new proportions. Time to cover her head so she won't see how I'm mutilating her body. I snip snapped her legs and cut her torso in half. I will be repositioning her to better fit in a pumpkin that I want her to sit in. I'm so glad that I'm making figurines so I can destroy all of the doll's joints and not be bothered by it even a tiny bit.
I sanded down the rough edges, thinned her knees and made holes in each piece for the wire attachments. Then I glued the wires in with a super glue. At that moment I also posed her legs in their final position. I glued the torso pieces together using a hot glue gun. It was such a small gap and there were so many holes inside each part for glue to stick that I decided to not use a wire here. When it all cooled down I glued the rest of the joints with a super glue. Except for the left wrist, to leave the access to the right elbow easier for a bit longer. When the glue cured, I covered all the joints and gaps with epoxy. I'm using a lot of water on my fingertips, the cotton swabs and micro brushes to smooth everything out and to prevent the epoxy sticking to my hands. On the next morning I sanded the epoxy using a nail buffer and I drilled two holes for the wings. And finally I could glue the wrist in place. I painted the body with skin matching acrylic and after three layers of Mr. Super Clear, I gave her a similar blushing and shading treatment as I gave to the face. and I added some dark brown acrylic to the crevices of the segments. I also added some freckles here and there. And the creamy white highlights. All aboard! <laughs> I attached the doll to a block of clay, so it will be easier for me to style her hair. To create a hairstyle I used my beloved telescopic radio antenna, hair straightener and something to separate the hair strands. The process is very easy, but time consuming. This time it took me three whole hours. I only left out the green part at the top of the head. I left it straight. So my goal was to achieve a hairstyle that will look somewhat like a pumpkin. I started separating the curls, cut them part by part, styled them and fixed them with a hairspray until I got this lovely round pumpkin orange afro. Time to deal with the green hair. 
I just curled the end of it on a thicker part of the antenna and style it to the side. Sweet! Time to make her stand. She will be sitting in a pumpkin, so let's make one. I used a round jar to make a basic shape pattern. Then I cut it down into pieces that I will be able to lay flat and transfer to an EVA foam. I glued all the foam pieces with a contact cement and to make it more Halloween-y I curved the smiling pumpkin face. I also made a top for the pumpkin. To bulk our pumpkin up I transferred the patterns once again, this time onto a thicker foam. Then I sanded down every piece heavily. That was messy. I glued the pieces to the base and covered the whole pumpkin with three layers of Vicol wood glue. When it dried, I painted my pumpkin with yellow and orange acrylics. I had a hard time mixing the perfect orange for the other layer of the pumpkin. So I used a wash technique with a green Winston and Newton ink and covered everything with two layers of vermilion ink. At the end it looked pretty good. I glued my pumpkin to the wooden stand and made duct tape borders for the kitty litter and wood glue mixture. The pumpkin doesn't have any wire attachments to the stand, so I need the expanding mixture to hold it. After a night of curing, I removed the tape, sanded down the rough edges and painted the stand with black and brown acrylic paints. Fixed everything with a coat of MSC. I used Liquitex gloss varnish to add some moisture to the pumpkin. And after it dried, I glued some moss and plastic leaves here and there. I found these fake grape leaves that I have from my costume making career kinda great for the pumpkin leaves. I just made them a little bit rounder. The only things missing were her fairy wings and insect-like antennas. For the wings I tried to experiment with adding ink to resin, but it didn't mix well and didn't cure.
Then I tried to add some shimmery nail powder and it kinda did the trick. The rest I made same as always, only this time I didn't add that much pattern and that many veins. Pretty nice as for an experiment. For the antennas I made teeny tiny loops at the ends of the wire pieces and put a drop of UV resin on top. Then painted them black and secured with more resin. Voila! Time to put everything together. Guys, if you want to make any holes in your doll, always mark the spots first. I didn't do it here and the antennas turned out very asymmetric. I was so pissed at myself, but at this point there was no way to fix it, so I will have to just live with it. I added gloss to her eye, lips and tongue and she is finished. So, what do you think? Does she fit into my fairy world with my other fairies? I am personally very disappointed that I messed up the antenna's placement just at the finish of the project. It will haunt my dreams now. Nevertheless, I think that she turned out very, very cute. She is giving me this kind of troublemaker vibes that I was really going for. And I love her pumpkin stand. Oh my, I really do enjoy making those stands for my dolls. She will be yet another seasonal fairy in my mom's collection. So I hope that my mom will like how she turned out. I would love to read your opinions about this pumpkin girl. So if you have any thoughts, share them with me in a comment section. If you enjoyed this process, Give this video a like and don't forget to subscribe if you want to see my next projects. Hit the bell button for the future notifications. I will be making one more Halloween doll, but she will be a little bit late to the party, I'm afraid. Anyway, on this channel every month can be a spooky season. Thank you all for watching, happy Halloween! And see you soon! To co, na rączki? Na rączki? <laughs>